Welcome to your new Square FTPOS machine. This FPOS machine is very easy to use even if you're not particularly tech savvy, so don't be intimidated. If you've ever used a smartphone, you will find this very familiar. And if you don't have a smartphone, don't worry, it's still very easy. There is a lot of work that goes into setting up the FPOS machine for the very first time when you get it for your business. So if that is your situation, this does not apply to you. But if you are someone who is working as a cashier and your manager has already set up this FPOS machine for your business, then it is very straightforward for you. The first thing you need to locate is the button on the side of the machine. If the machine is in standby mode, a quick press will turn it on. If this does not turn on the machine, then the machine is probably turned off. In which case, you will need to give the button a long press to turn it on, just like on most phones. If your square terminal still does not turn on when you do this, then the battery may be flat and you may need to plug it in to recharge it. You can use the terminal while it is plugged in. If the terminal has been off, you may find that it needs a software update. This can take anywhere from 10 minutes to half an hour. So make sure that you turn the square terminal on when you arrive so that there is plenty of time for updates to install before you have to serve your first customers. The machine may turn off and on again a number of times while updates are being installed. If the screen goes blank at any time, don't worry, it's just the screen going to sleep. The update is still making progress. If you'd like to check on the progress, simply quick tap that side button again and the screen will come back on. When the updates are eventually all installed and finished, the terminal will boot up to the main screen. At this point, you can start serving customers. If the screen is getting darker, just before it goes to sleep, just tap the screen quickly anywhere to wake it up again, just like a phone screen. Probably try to pick a blank bit of the screen, otherwise it might register that you pressed a button. If for any reason, when you turn on the machine, you see a different screen, like this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one, it's very easy to get back to the main sales screen. Just touch the checkout button in the bottom left hand of the screen, and then the keypad button in the top left hand of the screen. And there you go, you're back to where you need to be. So to get here, you've hardly done anything. You have turned on the machine and maybe plugged it in if necessary. Besides that, the machine has done all the work and it has brought you to this screen. And now you can start taking FPOS payments. So as you'll see, the screen has gone to sleep to conserve energy. Quite simply as before, quick press of this button down in the corner and the screen is back on. To make a sale, Simply type in the amount that you want, just as if it were a calculator. So if you want to make a sale of one dollar, one, zero, zero, and you have a dollar. If you'd like it to be ten dollars, you need to add another zero. If you accidentally add too many zeros, press the C for clear and start again, just like a calculator. To take a payment, simply input the price of the item that you're selling Touch the blue button, Review Sale. It will tell you the amount, $1, correct. Touch the blue button again and it is ready to go. You can now turn the machine to the customer. You tap, insert, or swipe their card. If inserting the card, they will have a choice of which account to use based on what accounts are attached to their card. They will be asked to enter their PIN. 
and the payment is successful. You will then be offered a choice of whether the customer would like a receipt. Email, text message, print or no receipt. You can have the customer do all this. You don't need to do it for them. If they would like a receipt emailed to them, all they need to do is touch email and touch in the text box and type in their email address. Receipt sent. I'll do another sale now to show you another way that people may pay. Again, I'm going to put in the input price of $1. This is because $1 is actually the minimum sale you can put through. So do not try to use the machine to charge people for items of 50 cents. It will not work as a single sale. Review sale, charge, and a customer may just simply tap. Also easy. Now if they would like a paper receipt, simply press print. At this point the terminal directs the customer to hand the terminal back to you. You may already have the terminal by this stage anyway. Now we've pressed print but nothing is happening. That is because the machine is waiting for you to tell it to go. Print receipts up here in the top left corner. Press that and the receipt will magically appear. Done. That's a customer copy. You do not need to print or keep any receipts for the shop because it is all recorded digitally. If the customer says they do not need a receipt, simply touch no receipt. When the sale is complete, you'll be on a screen similar to this. It will eventually clear and return to the keypad, but if you need to use it more quickly than that, just look in the top left hand corner where it says new sale and touch there. A general rule is if you're stuck on a screen and you don't know what it wants, look in the top left corner. For the intended audience of this video, simply record the transaction in the book as normal, but add the letter E at the end of the transaction. If you want to see what transactions you have made during the day, perhaps you forgot to write one down in the book. Simply go to the Transactions tab down the bottom, and it'll tell you the date and all the transactions made on that day. When you're finished with that, you can go back to the checkout tab and you're ready to keep selling. If you accidentally press review sale when you haven't entered any charge amount, simply press the cross in the corner here to make the screen go back to the keypad. Overall, it's pretty straightforward if you can use a smartphone, if you can use a calculator, and if anything unexpected happens, just take a moment to look at the screen and usually you will find that the terminal is telling you how to proceed. If the terminal loses internet connection, you may have some problems. Give it a moment to regain connection or maybe move slightly closer to your Wi-Fi point. If the receipt paper runs out, changing the receipt paper is actually very easy. The machine helps you the whole way. The receipt roll is in the top of the terminal up here. You can see where it comes out. To change the roll, simply push open the door. So you can see we actually have quite a lot of paper left, but if you didn't, you'd simply take out the roll. And don't worry, you haven't forgotten how to put it in because the machine will tell you. Reload paper as shown. Insert the roll into the printer. Feed the papers in through the slot as you close the door. So here is a brand new roll. Simply loosen where it is taped down. Put the roll just into the cradle there. Make sure the paper is coming through and looks the same as in the picture. And close the window. You've reloaded paper and you're ready to go. Simple.
there's only one thing left to know then. And that's what to do with the machine at the end of the day. Different places may have different policies, but for the intended audience of this video, simply make sure the machine is plugged in overnight so that it can charge and you don't even need to turn it off. Just allow the machine to go to sleep by itself or give the side button a quick press to put it into sleep mode. There is no need to turn the machine off. Leaving the machine in sleep mode overnight is helpful because it is scheduled at 2 a.m. to check for and install any updates. This will mean that in the morning your machine is already turned on and ready to go with a quick press. If for any reason you would like to turn off the machine, that is also simple. Just like with a phone, long press the power button. Power off or restart. If you accidentally long press the power button when you were just trying to put it into sleep mode and you don't want to power it off or restart it, simply tap somewhere else on the screen and you'll be back as you were. I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to come back to this video anytime and refresh your knowledge of how to use your square handheld terminal. Happy selling.